we're recording right now. All right, wait. You guys, Mars and Vincent, on your podcast, which I there's two names apparently. You guys are you guys suck at branding. Uh, did you guys change the name to make it all consistent? Well, we're gonna yeah, change right. the 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 channel name to Thinking Out Loud. Thinking and then the Out podcast Loud podcast is called Thinking Out Loud podcast. Okay, good. Is that uh, yeah? That's better than the Babylon Project, right? I guess so. Um, well, well, now at least we plugged your podcast at the beginning of the show, so that oh, that's people, right. yeah, yeah, so now people uh, could go check it out. Go check it out. Search for Thinking Out Loud. Not very original name, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> 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 Babylon kind of reminds me of the whole Babylon Five thing. So doesn't matter. The Babylon sounds pretty cool. Like oh shit! No. All right. Wait, All right, never... Armin, plug the Patreon. Okay. Patreon. Oh yeah! If you want to join these discussions, become a Patreon. Link in the description. Or if not, I don't care. Fuck you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> my god. Okay. What? Please hit the like, subscribe, oh. the notification bell, all that shit. We appreciate the support. Yes. I do. Yes. Even if Mr. Navabi here doesn't know how to <laughs> do anything. <laughs> All right, link is in the description to become a patron and patron, patron, and join these discussions if you want to. Stop it on, Susanna. <laughs> yeah, whatever Susanna oh. said. Don't listen to Ar- me. Yeah. Armin's just blunt, and I think that's awesome. Uh, it's awesome until it's not that awesome. Anyway, awesome. let me we let need me. A little bit of sugar, okay? My dad would always say, "Honey attracts more flies than vinegar." Okay. <laughs> So you oh, can't yeah, start that. out. You can't start <laughs> off top. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you need your support, you whoever you are. Yeah. What's the point? Um, you guys mentioned that on the podcast. On the by the way, did you guys saw that the the vegan that got so angry at me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that on your Facebook. Yeah, man, that guy got so pissed. And honestly, if you if he releases the video. You guys will be able to see that I was in, I was not rude to him in any shape, form. Like I was not at all rude to him. Never in well, any. Was he just upset that he couldn't answer a question or something like that? Like they just get really, I think, I don't know, irritable that he couldn't just come up. He didn't have a good I've... answer to a question. I'm that's gonna... how vegans usually are, anyways. Though. No, no, they're good. Many vegans like are good. Like Alex is good. Alex. <laughs> Uh, cosmic skeptic is good. I was okay. Well, was, he's an exception. He's pretty cool, though. No, <laughs> yeah, and also I I'm try to be charitable towards vegans, and you know I assume that even if I disagree with them, um, their main goal is to be like, oh my god, we need to reduce suffering, right? Mm-hmm. So that means like, be- until they prove me otherwise, I'm gonna assume they're on the side of reducing suffering. You know, you know that you know most, which I think most of them are like that. But I don't know. I don't know why every time I meet one, I have such a bad experience with them. Okay. So I, I should say some vegans are like that. Hashtag that all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where, like, if when you're under the impression that there is a Holocaust going on for animals, then you're going to act irritated. The same way how, like, you know. It, like the Extinction Rebellion, everyone likes to make fun of them, but if you're in, under the impression that the world is going to end in 12 years, then you'd probably be as alarmist as they are. Yeah, but that's how that's how it, that's the conditions that we are at going into the conversation already. So what did I say that all of a sudden set him off so much? I my, my hypothesis, again, this is not even theory level, is that it's easy to deal with most non-vegans because most non-vegans are inconsistent with their positions. And it's so easy to point out how inconsistent their positions are. And it's not that frustrating to deal with them because you just point to that and then you're like, haha, destroyed your, your, your logical inconsistencies. But then if you talk to like maybe somebody like me, because I'm crazy, you usually like the consistency is, you know, the once you meet the set conditions that they say, like you see that I apply it to humans as well. So they just think like, okay, this guy is 
insane against humans and animals, I guess. <laughs> right? And I think they're not, they don't know how to deal with that. Um, it just it, the frame they try the way they try to frame it is very like he got frustrated at the end because he's like okay so if you that means that you are for a holocaust against humans who are disabled in a way that they're not self aware and we also live in a world that if um well, he said, "Oh, you're so you're against you're for Holocaust against disabled people." I like. Well, I don't like your framing of it. The way I would say it is, um, if we if we lived in a world where humans were not self aware, some humans were not self aware, and that we were we wouldn't get traumatic, we wouldn't get a traumatic. Ex- we we weren't disgusted about eating human meat, and eating human meat was not unhealthy, and the human society would not have a traumatic experience, but but the knowledge that we live in a world where we chop people up and eat them, um, then there is no, then, okay, then sure, go ahead and do it. And like, oh, so, so then that was my framing of it. Like his, his framing of it was like, oh, so you're for Holocaust of disabled people. I like, that's not the right framing of it. And you're like, oh, you're just sugarcoating it. I'm being technically correct about the way I'm framing it. I like, well, what, then I said, well, the way I'm framing it, you call it sugarcoating, but my framing of it is also technically a correct position of what I'm saying. And then he got so pissed off and he started like, he hung up without, hung up without saying goodbye. And I don't know. Oh, wow. It, it was at that moment that he got super pissed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have a recording? Well, yeah, probably his perception to be changed. Like no. He was the one recording it. He was so nice at the beginning. I didn't think he was doing it. He would do like, he would, be, I, I told him like, do you promise? Like, you're going to send me a copy? And like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I should have well, trusted. If you really think about it, though, no matter what you, no matter what, no matter what side of the fence you sit on, vegan or a meat eater, no matter what, animals are still going to suffer, no matter what you do. I mean, you know, you got to consider the uh, c- uh, clearing for the land, uh, not loss of habitat for the animals that has to. They, you have to clear the land for the farms. Then you also have to consider the pesticides that people use. That animals could eat the eat the pesticides. They get damaged that way. The bird no, defects caused by the pesticides. So, I mean, uh, suffering, if you think about it, suffering, just solely focusing on suffering as a for a vegan diet isn't a very good argument. No, I mean, it's not about um, completely removing suffering. It's about reducing suffering. So I don't think, it's a, I don't agree with that, Chris, because it's not all or none. It's not like, like oh, we're going to, like, it's kind of like, People say, like, oh, we're going to be sick anyways. People are going to die anyways. So why do we do this? Why should I? Like, well, it's not about completely removing something. It's about reducing it. We could say that about atheist activism as well. We could be like, well, people people are going to be religious anyway. So why try to inform people and try to convince them that their religious is bullshit? Where people will always, there will always be religion. Or like, well, because... Even if you could convince some one person out of nonsense, you already did a lot, right? Well, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not specifically saying like you know, it's their argument is they're going to reduce all suffering. I'm just saying that if their argument, is, I mean, if their argument is solely based on the suffering of the animal, just the suffering of the animal, then that's not a good argument to use. Wait, wait. Because, wait. like I said, mm-hmm. no matter no matter what side of the fence you sit on, either if you're a vegan. You know, if you eat the if you eat the crops that are, even if you eat crops that are organic, there are there are some. Yeah, but that's way less. The suffering caused by that is way less than the suffering animals experience in in factory farms and shit like that. It's way less. Like right now, the amount of chickens that exist in animal farms is like, and they all being tortured is like astronomical. Like that number is crazy high. Right. Yeah. 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 It is crazy high. Like to be fair, this is what vegans have a point. There's right now as we speak, there's shit amount of torture happening for our bellies. A shit amount of torture is happening right now for our bellies. To be full. That is fair. That's a fair point. Yeah, when you use factory farms, yeah, that is actually is a fair point. Yeah. 
and, and what the point I'm trying to make is like, let, you know, so I'm a species, okay? And most <laughs> most vegans agree that, I mean, not most vegans, but I don't know if it's most, but a lot of vegans I talk to, they admit like, listen, I'm a, they agree that they're species as well. They're like, yeah, I care about humans more than animals. Uh, the point is that they still care about animals, even if they care about humans more than animals. They care about animals enough to want to stop the suffering, which is fair, which is fair, fair enough. Like, like they're not saying like, oh, I care about a mosquito as much as I care about a human being. Um, which, yeah, so most of us are speciesist. Um, but the difference is I care about animals, too. I don't want animals to suffer. I just don't care about them enough to be motivated to, you know, do something, do not eat meat. Okay. The reason, and people are like, well, that's, you agree that they're being tortured and you can't stop eating meat for them. Or like, yeah, I'm not motivated enough because, and this, and this is not inconsistent with my other positions because we're all doing something very similar. Uh, and this is what I brought up with that vegan, and he was frustrated by this as well. As like, we all, there's a lot of suffering happening around the world. And what the logical position for us to have is to, if we want to have any logical position against suffering in the world, we have to take in into account the our resources and part of our resources is the amount of sympathy and care each one of us has, right? This is not an unlimited resource that we could tap into, right? Um, and to prove it is like, I show like, look, I have this phone, okay? I didn't, ne I didn't really need to have this phone, okay? I could have gotten, a, 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 you know, a, not even a smartphone, right? I have, well, let's see what else we have. I have air conditioning right now running, okay? I could work in really high heat and I will still be able to do my work and I wouldn't have to pay for my electricity bill. And I could have used this money to maybe donate to a charity, for example. And this is just an example. There's many other ways you could do this. Uh, and save, with $50, I think the last time I checked, with $50, you could save one child from starvation for a whole year. Right. So when I every every time I turn on this air conditioner, I am deciding, actively deciding that my comfort is important than that child. Not, you know, so to me, it's effective. This is technically the same as me. Killing a child to make sure I'm not uncomfortable it's technically the same every time i turn on my air conditioner it's technically the same position as like sacrifice that child so i have air conditioner so i'm not uncomfortable when i'm working technically morally that's the same position and some people say like no inaction and action are not the same thing like if you don't take an action and somebody suffers it's not the same as you actually actively making somebody suffer and i don't i don't agree with that i don't think that's there's a difference and the examples that i come up with to show that they are not different is imagine if you have somebody uh, stuck to a machine uh, and there's a button that if you press it will kill them okay and you're like okay i'm not going to press it i don't want like this is somebody innocent doesn't deserve to die and you're like okay i'm not going to press the button because why would i want to kill this person now we have a second scenario very much the same a person is stuck to a machine there's another button but in this scenario there's a countdown let's say a 10 minute countdown and if you if the countdown goes to zero this person will die unless you press the button the, the button will stop the person from dying right so if you just sit there for 10 minutes and do nothing all you have to do is press the button and you will save the person. But you're like, nope, I'm not going to press it. And it goes to zero and the person dies. You are, you did the same thing as you would. This would technically be the same as scenario number one as if you press the button. There is no moral. Morally, you did the same thing. So 
not pressing the button in scenario two is completely morally equivalent to pressing the button in, uh, in scenario number one. You kill the person by not pressing the button. You're not morally, it's not morally less, you know. So in action and action, there's technically no difference, right? Now, I don't see a, a, one of them being more than, a, you know, emotionally you might have a different reaction to it. And that's the, like it. Um, the problem with the trolley because you know maybe you emotionally cannot push somebody in front of a train even if it's the right thing to do even if you have an emotionally different reaction to it the effect is the same thing so technically these are morally equivalent so me not paying having fifty dollars to spare and not paying for a charity like even if I do pay to donate to charity okay if I don't pay my last fifty spare dollars like I say I pay two thousand dollars every month to charity. But I have fifty dollars left, and I like you know what this fifty dollars is. I'm gonna go treat myself. I'm not gonna spend this fifty dollars. I already paid two thousand dollars to charity. No, so that fifty dollars could have saved one more child, and you didn't. You 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 were selfish enough not to spend that fifty dollars on charity. Uh, that so technically for you decided that whatever you spend that last fifty dollars on was more important than one child dying from starvation. Okay, yeah. so. What I'm saying is that unless these vegans, for example, are have given up everything and are in all for like, you know, just sacrificing their entire life for charity. And this is not just about vegan. It's about everybody that thinks that it's an all or none thing. Right. I'm saying my eating meat is the same as my other, you know, evil decisions of turning on my air conditioner, right? So I have decided, for example, to care about suffering and I decided to care about suffering and reduce it in some air, try to reduce it in some areas, right? But I didn't go and do everything I can. And I think most people have it and that's fine. What I think is that because we have limited sympathy and limited emotional capital to spend on reducing suffering, the, the message and the motivation should be for us to just exercise that muscle, to make people care about something, not care about everything. Because that's, 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 that's not how we operate. That's as humans, that's not how our mind operates, right? You cannot, if you try to make people care about everything you're not, you're gonna lose them you know you're gonna be like okay fine i can't like their mind is gonna give up and be like i don't care about everything for example here's an here's a here's something that people say is inconsistent but i don't think it's inconsistent let's say you have a girl in front of you and she's dying from she's drowning um and you like you go save her right but, um, oh, what was the example? Oh, but if you want to go save her, your shoes will get ruined, right? You were like, um, you might be like, okay, but shoes is not important. This girl is drowning. And you just jump in the river and you save her, right? But, but you, by buying that shoe, you could have saved like 100 kids from dying in Africa or somewhere. And you already bought that shoe. So you technically could have sold those shoes or not buy those shoes and pay and save a whole bunch of other kids. But because they're far and they, you don't see them emotionally, it doesn't motivate you to save 100 kids. Right. But when they but and nobody really expects that from you. But if you just stood there and the girl right in front of you, the child in front of you drowned. And you're like, oh, I didn't save her because my shoes would be ruined. People would like think you're a moral monster, but they should have thought they should have think, thought that you're a moral monster for from buying the shoes to begin with, because you could have saved more kids by not buying that shoe, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's how our brain works. Our brain does care about proximity, does care about things that happens next to us. Like our brain does care about things that are, you know, that emotionally where what if somebody is dying in front of us, we are motivated to care about them more than a thousand people that are dying somewhere else. You're like, oh, that's not logical. Well, what are you going to do? That's how, that's, that's how we're wired, right? And if you 
what what you have to do is encourage every person to care about that girl that is dying in front of them. You know, that would be taking people from not caring to caring about one person or just a little bit is more efficient than trying to get people that care somewhat to care about fucking everything. You're not going to be able to do that and you might actually lose some people that already care. You might get them to not care at all. We're like, oh, you want me to be consistent? Okay, then I'm not going to care about the thousand people that are dying. You know, they're not going to say that, but exhaustion of moral exhaustion will get them to, to this position. Okay, I'm going to be consistent by not caring about any of them, <laughs> right? And this is what vegans have done with animals, right? You could have gotten a lot of people to care about animals suffering, right? But when you go out and tell them, as long as you fuck eat meat, as long as you drink milk, as long as you have honey, you know, then fuck you. They're like, okay, then I'm going to be consistent and I'm not going to care about sh any of them. You know, fuck it. Like, this is how animal rights got such a bad rep. Like, because, because people think, when you talk about animal rights, people think veganism. People don't think, when you talk about animal rights, people don't think like, hey, we could get past laws to force corporations to treat animals better. Because if that's what they thought, if that's what crossed their mind when people thought about animal rights, people were like, yeah, animal rights. Fuck big corporations that are torturing animals. Yes, regulations for big corporations. Like, I could get behind that. But that's not what crosses people's mind when you say animal rights. People are like, oh, angry vegans that are telling me how evil I am. Right? So, like, people are like, okay, forget animal rights. I don't care about animal rights. You manage to... Such a natural thing that people would care about, like, oh my god, look at pe these poor animals, look how they're treating them. That was such an easy message to get people to care about. But you lost people by such horrible advertising and branding. Like, this, would, this was so easy to popularize. And I'm not saying some people are not doing it, some people are doing it. But again, the fact that most people think about veganism uh, when they think about animal rights shows to me that how bad this messaging has been. Anyways, right. I mean, uh, no, uh, yeah. Aside from the messaging and all that stuff, um, going back to the moral consistency of vegans, wouldn't a vegan just say like, "Yeah, I agree with your moral philosophies and your moral dilemmas about the girl drowning in the river and whether or not you want to get your shoes"? Like, I agree with all of that. But what I'm saying is that you should care enough about the animals to the point where you don't want to eat them. I'm not saying you should have unlimited love for everybody because I agree, we're we're limited in our resources. I'm just asking you to care enough about animals. Well, okay, so first of all, um, what you care about is not really that much of a choice, right? Um, well, you can, be, you can be convinced into caring right. about something that you originally wouldn't have cared about. Yeah, that's, okay, so you can do that, yeah. And that's what the vegans should do, right? Um, or animal rights activists should do to make people care more about animals, right? And you don't, um, I, I agree with that, but the thing is that... Um, you know, so for example, you you think like, I'm not, it's not, it's, you do, are you against starvation right now? Child starvation. Oh, are you actually asking yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are uh, you against? I'd rather it not happen, but I go back, yeah, so I, I agree it. with what, yeah, sure. But are you, do you care about it enough to give up everything that you own? Like, you, what are you drinking right now? That's I'm drinking, yeah, so I could sell this. No, because I agree with what you said. I think that in right. order for the net, like, well, let me just uh, finish real quick. My moral philosophy is that in order to increase the level of happiness overall, people need to find an equilibrium between caring about themselves and caring about other people. You can't right. just care about yourself 0% and care about other people 100%. That will decrease the level of happiness in society rather than increase it. It also doesn't work very so, well. Yeah. It's not the pragmatic really either. It's really interesting. So what we call this in neuroscience and psychology is flexible social cognition. So it's been studied that we only have a capacity to care for a finite number of people. And people theorize that it's because we evolved out of small communities, usually not more than like 150 people. And so past around that number, we are less motivated towards, you know, deep altruistic behavior because cognitively we can't take on caring about that many people, which is why, you know, like someone who's 
deeply devoted to charity or a faith leader or something can like walk past a homeless person on the street. Like, you know, you might be, there might be a cause that you care deeply about, but you can't take on deeply caring about every single individual. Like our brains literally couldn't sustain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paul Bloom talks about that greatly in his book against empathy, where it says, you know, uh, think about a girl the same race of yours drowning in, in a well close by to you, and you immediately feel empathy about her. Nothing about two girls, nothing about three, nothing about a hundred. And at a point, you just can't feel the same amount of empathy with a hundred girls as you would with one. That's why in the news media, it's so sensationalized when you hear about something happening to just one person. But when there's news stories about a whole genocide occurring, it's not as effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but going, like the, going back along what, what 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 Susanna was saying, it's like a Peter Singer talks about this in his book, The Extending Circle, in which like uh, the way with the way humans evolve, like what you mentioned, Susanna, like you know how we were in these communities about 150 people. We're we're bred to we're bred we're um we've evolved to care most about mostly about people immediately surrounding us, our families, our kin members, and slowly that the circle just expands out to our immediate community. Um, I forget what what exactly he said in his book, but like um getting people to getting people to to care about so many faceless individuals may not necessarily be the most effective way of getting the 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 moral results that we want and if we putting aside animal rights for a second if, if we want to get to the 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 future that we want the, um, according to the, to the moral systems that we would consider ethical in the in, in the present we have to work along the confines of our biology so it, I, I, I hate to put it this way, but it, it almost sounds like he's talking about like trickle down morality, like, kind of like trickle down economics. If that if that makes any sense. No. No. It, it's a it's a bad choice of words, but it, it it's something along the lines of like. Um, I I was trickle down morality. I, I works. Words. But, no, but, well, but I'm but not talking saying... about trickle down morality. I'm talking about so, like um learning how to like uh, what Paul Bloom was saying, like um um. You know, if you if you put the face like one girl, mm-hmm. um, to 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 dredge up um, feelings of empathy for her, you, right you almost certainly get the kind of response because that the picture of that one individual it, it, it becomes something very very personal, almost I guess like like, like kinship. But if you try to throw in a bunch a, a large group of people, which get our statistics, so when so, people like, uh, go oh, sorry, go ahead. No, but 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 what you're saying, Mars, like what in response to like these facts, people what people like yeah. Alex from Cosmic Skeptic would say is like, okay, we need to be consistent. We need to be logically consistent. Like we need to fix these things. We need to care about the thousand person at more than we care about the one person dying in front of us. We need to care right. about, but no, we can't. Okay, so I think. And until the day that you go in and rewire our fucking brains, um, you cannot treat humans like robots that are calculating these things. The logical thing to do is include our emotional um, resources into your calculation. You need to... You need, you know, to figure out what's the best thing to do and how to manipulate our brain to do the most good. You cannot treat human beings like robots. You need to see, you need to, the emotional capital that we have has to be added to our calculation process. Does Alex say this? Alex wants to be completely logically consistent. From what I remember, I remember him being him having Peter Singer on his podcast, and I could be misremembering this. I don't think I am. And Peter Singer talks about expanding the moral circuit to as many people as, as you can, as you're, as you're saying, Armin. And he it? says, P, uh, this is when Peter was Singer on was podcast. on Alex, the Cosmic Skeptic podcast. Because yeah, I'm going to say it was before or after I talked to him, so maybe it's different. But you, it, was, it, was, it should have been after, because you were the first one, right? It was, it was after. Podcast. Okay. It was after. Yeah, and so he, I remember Peter Singer saying that he donates... I mean, Peter Singer is a millionaire, I'm assuming, and he donates most of his money to charitable causes, but he keeps just enough for him to live a happy, content life. And he says, that's what we should do. 
where if you're rich or even if you're not rich, donate as much money as you can reasonably do to the point where you still have enough to live a comfortable life. That ink that lets why, you be happy. Why should we do this? Well, the, for the same reason that you're saying that we need to increase the well, you're not saying this, but you're saying that they're saying that they should increase the moral circle as much as possible. So that's why I, I was I was a bit confused when you said that Alex says we need to treat everybody like robots. Well, I mean, like if you, no, did, if you I'm, could don't. I'm strawmanning him a little bit. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying what I'm saying is that the 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 steel manning is that he wanted to be completely the way he said it to me, which maybe he changed his mind since then, that he wanted to be completely consistent with his logic, right? Um, and I, you know, so he wanted to be like. But I don't know the example I gave him that why that doesn't make sense. I wish I'd recorded this when I told him that is like, let, look, um, that he was even considering going full minimalist, right? Full minimalist, oh. not owning nothing other than what you need to survive, right? At that time, at least he was thinking about it. Maybe he changed his mind. I was like, look, let's say that you are an activist that is reducing suffering around the world, and but you're losing motivation, you're losing you know but you decide to tell yourself that listen if i hit this milestone i will buy myself a rolex watch or whatever you really enjoy right uh, i don't care about that but let's say like the person that we're talking about really like that right um and that motivation gets him to actually do a lot more good and then he buys himself a reward because of the milestone that he reached you could be like well why do you have a gold you know why do you have a, such an important expensive watch um you could have use that to do more good and like yeah but he hacked his brain in a way to be able to do more right so and i think that, um, and he he realized that he's an emotional being and he needs to emotionally manipulate himself in a way to do more like the motivation levels could drop like you cannot be like i'm just going to do these things um you know and this is the most logical thing to do so i'm going to do it you're not your brain doesn't work like that um and also, I don't think that the, what the, the level, the it, what this calculation is not going to be the same at, for everybody, right? Some person might be like, you, you, for example, Vincent said like, oh, you're a millionaire. You could have enough money to just live a very comfortable life. Somebody might be well, like, I, I said Peter Singer said that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but somebody, and you said like, he's saying everybody should do that. But somebody might be like, you know what? I care so much about the people and animals and everything that the most comfortable position for me is to own nothing but what I need to live, right? Sure. That person's calculation might be different from me, right? Maybe his level of care, emotional sympathy, research that he has to spend is so much more than me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe he doesn't even care about comfort, he or she or whatever, right? Um, and another person might be like, you know what, I really... Um, they they have very little sympathy and really I'll, care about. I'll be right it. back, guys. Okay, okay. And they might really care about life, their lifestyle, right? Their emotional calculation is different. As an activist, I shouldn't. What I try to do with that person is to get them to care just a little bit, just a tiny bit. I can't be like, oh, everybody uh, have to be like, this is the level of comfort that you need. And this is the level of uh, sympathy that you need to ex uh, expend on people, right? Different people are wired differently. As long as you could go from from getting to to care just a little bit more, that should be your goal. That should be that's your goal. I, yeah, and that's what I was saying what you, before. I I, I, butchered, I butchered it by my um by my wording a bit, but like you know, biologically we're wired to care about our own self interest, and biologically we're wired to care mostly about our immediate environment around us, and we right. slowly. Develop an understanding of other people's um, needs, wants, and, um, and 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 desires as we learn as we learn more about people around us. But it becomes more of an intellectual exercise. So, if you want to spread morality, if you want to spread well-being, if you want to um, if you want to spread the kind of the 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 understanding of morality that we share, then um, going about it in a cold, logical, robotic fashion is not the best. It's probably not the best way to do it because biologically we, we're not wired that way. I mean, getting people to care on a, on, a, on, a, on a more progressive basis, right. starting with um, our more immediate circles, seems to be the best way of, uh, of putting it out there. And I think Peter puts in his book that if we want to have a more moral world, mm. 
we have to work with what's available to us um, right. in in those regards. So hopefully I'm not strawmanning here, uh, strawmanning him here, but like I think that's largely the idea he wants to get across in, um, in books because we're not machines; we're biological creatures hemmed in by our biology. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think Pete Singer would necessarily disagree with what you have said, Armin. He he probably would agree that people have different calculations, right. but he just says, look, the fact of the matter is, is that most of us are living with things that we don't need. And once we realize the amount of suffering that we could minimize, then probably most of us would agree. OK, yeah, let's at least, you know, donate some money to charity, keep enough money for us to live comfortably as comfortably as we desire. It, yeah, it's not, it's not about what we need. It's about what we want. It's about but what we want. People can be convinced out of not needing what they want. Yeah, but even if you don't need it, you might just want it. Okay, yeah, you sure, might. But people there's, not a, uh, there's, there's also a, there's, I forget exactly what it's called, but there's a certain social conditioning that people experience where if, if you know if something happens on a consistent basis, say like you know the starving children, starving children around the world, you know there's literally millions of starving children around the world now. If there's only one starving child. You know, people probably care more about that one starving child, but since since starvation happens on a consistent basis, people like, like I said, I forget exactly what the social it's it's there's it's a social conditioning, and I forget exactly what it's called, but people are more conditioned to not care about that since it's happened so much. They feel like there's nothing they can really do about it. It's like, why should I care if there's nothing I can do about it? If it's going to keep continuing to ha continuing to happen, and my actions aren't reducing the effect at all. Why should I care? Well, we should show them that their actions does have an effect, and instead of care looking at the whole thing, we should show them sp focus specifically on the small area that they're making a difference, right? But that's the yeah, yeah, I agree, but that's not how most people work, though. Most, how, how most people think is they look at the bigger picture. They don't look at, you know, right. if I, but say, this, donate $20 to this charity, right. I can help. 10 children out they think why does it matter all these children are, all these other children are suffering so i'm not really doing anything important well that's the job of the activists to make them again this is why vegans suck at activism right the, 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 the <laughs> job the job of the activists is to make them see the small change rather than looking at the big picture personally at, i think uh, i think i but, think the, me, uh, say, Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go, no, okay. No, go ahead. ahead and finish. I'm no, no, sorry. you go ahead because you haven't been speaking okay. for a while. I didn't be talking more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Personally, I think the whole reason why most people view vegans as horrible activists is because when people view, when people think about vegan, they automatically think PETA. It's an automatic thing. You hear vegan, you think PETA, and everybody knows PETA is a shit organization. <laughs> Well, except everyone on Twitter, you know. Well, except for the people who support and follow v Peter and all, uh, all those other, f all, all that fun stuff. But that's what I think. Right. I think the reason why so many people view vegans, or why vegans, many of them, act the way they do, is because it, again, it goes back to what I said originally. If you're under the impression that there's a Holocaust going on against animals, then most people are going to emotionally react to that, like, "Oh, look how awful it is! People are monsters." And no. so they act that way. That's you don't not think how it is. No. No, if you, you okay, so here's the thing. If you tell people that there's um if 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 it becomes so okay, so let's just say if it was humans, okay? Let's say there was one Holocaust happening one time, you would probably be able to get um, actually you wouldn't. Because look at it, like even in China right now, what's happening is like a mu much milder version of what happened in ho mm -hmm. during Holocaust, right? Like we have concentration camps in China and we have like a million Muslims <laughs> being arrested for the crime of just being Muslim, right? Are you, how successful have we been <laughs> to make people care about that? Not very successful, right? So, I mean... Yeah. It's not, it's not, the mass, it's not about, unfortunately, it's not about the harm. It's about being able to capture people's attention. And again, this is a marketing thing, you know? Um, it's, it's not a, 
it's it's not a lo- being logical consistent it's not about like oh my god people should care about the level of harm it's not at all that it's about if if you, if you, if i could get one muslim um with a very sad story mm-hmm. and their experience in front of a camera and they had like if they if, if they looked better like if they were cute probably would get a lot more attention if, mm-hmm. if you know if they if they if they could speak well it would probably get more attention i would be able to do like so much with that one story more than the 1 million muslims right now that are in concentration camp okay so the fact is like you could say like oh if it was like a holocaust people would care if you could convince people that it was like a holocaust I would tell you that you could have 10 holocausts today of humans and if it's not if you don't have a somebody playing a violin in the background and talking about it like it's not gonna even like with human holocaust people wouldn't give a shit right unless well, a lot you're of vegan activists do view it that way they do yeah but i'm saying that. like people say people like oh the vegan activists are like oh this is like a holocaust so people should care i'm telling you that even if it was a human holocaust people wouldn't care yeah. If unless your messaging is, right. know, what does that have to do with what Actually, I said? I agree with Armin though, because, I mean, if you think about it throughout history, you know, I mean, uh, Hitler, what it was like six million Jews got killed in the, uh, six million Jews got killed in the concentration camps, and look how long. It, the the only reason that anybody really did anything about it for is because. He decided to invade other countries, and it took what six years to actually stop him. Right. Yeah, I think uh, the Russian gulags. I think it was like, and uh, uh, under uh, Joseph Joseph Stalin, fifteen million uh, 15, fifteen million Ukrainians or other Russians died of starvation. And the United States did absolutely fuck all about that because we were allies with them. You know, consider well, Pol Pot. Here's the thing, though. Like- when, when we got involved in World, World, World War II, like, um, it, it wasn't until the, Japanese, it, until the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor that we actually got involved. So it, that drove yeah. the story, the, um, the incident so close to home for most Americans, which is what propelled us into the war. Uh, right. By that time, the, 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 um, the, the European theater was just well on, it, like between Britain and Germany, it was on. And um, no, none, was, of the yeah. allies, none of the yeah. allies' main motivation for being against Hitler was his crime against Jews or anything like that. Oh. Yeah. And, right. you know, the, uh, yeah. And, and the right. thing is that, I mean, when, before the United States was got involved in everything, you know, the, the Wehrmacht was actually pretty much dominating all of Europe. Like they almost, the German army almost controlled everything. They took yeah. over France. They pretty much took over. The Britain was the only country that I can think of but, that was actively fighting against them because they took over Poland. They took over France. They had Russia as an ally. They had Germany. Uh, not I mean, Italy as an ally. They had Japan as an ally. And these people knew exactly what was going on. They, their allies knew what they were doing to the to the Jews. They just didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, because so right, what, ahead, when Vincent point. is saying, what does this got to do with what the vegans are saying is that because the vegans trying to convince us that we should care about animals because look how much we care about the Holocaust and this is happening a million times over right now with animals. And I'm telling you that humans don't care about even human Holocaust. Well, wait, what argument did I make that you're responding to? No, uh, not, specific, not your what argument. I'm, talk, I'm responding to what vegans trying, okay. what the me, vegans framing of the situation. Right, of, but of, the reason I brought it up was was in response to why vegans are are acting the way that they are, and I'm saying, well, if you're under the impression that there's a Holocaust against animals going on, then they right. would. That's why they're acting the way they are. Yeah, but but that messaging won't work for other people. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And right, and yep, vegans vegans are acting for different reasons. Not all of them are like that. But well, anyway. I mean, mo- mo- most that I've encountered have either, like Alex O'Connor says, this is the greatest atrocity of our time. Um, all you need to look at is the Extinction Rebellion. Many of those people are are vegans as well, and they're very apocalyptic, very alarmist about the way that it's going. And I mean, I can't again. This goes back to the same thing with the Extinction Rebellion. They're under the impression that the world is going to end in twelve years, and so they're acting as as assholey as they possibly can because of that, because they think that that's the best tactic. When it, I would ar- obviously argue that it's not. Right. 
Um, and so if they want to save animals, what I think they should do, and again, this goes back to what Mars said. I wanted to correct something that I think Mars said is like, we can't sure. be called logical, you know. The, the fact is that this is not a contradiction to taking emotions into account. Like the most cold logical thing to do is to take emotions into account. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not like, I don't think people are like, oh, we can't be purely logical because we're emotional being. It's not either or. The most logical position is to take into calculation our emotional resources. Do you know what I mean? It's not against logic to do that. It's kind of, I, I, think I, yeah, I, I, I think you, I think that's a gem right there, actually, Armin. I think that's a that's a gem that most people don't realize. The fact that their, their emotions play, should play into their logical calculation about how to live life. Most people don't view that way. Most people think of logic as Spock from Star Trek. Feel no emotion whatsoever, but right. by nature we're emotional creatures, so they have to play into our into our logical calculations. I, I, I think that's a that's very important. That's a very important thing that you said that I think most people don't recognize. Well, by extension, like not factoring your emotions into your moral calculus is illogical because, yeah. again, we're, we're like, I mean, the thing is, just take a little bit of a left turn right, uh, right here. It's like we, there's been a lot of headway into human evolutionary psychology. And like, um, you, you hear all this talk nowadays about some of the issues involving, like, say, social justice, so to speak. And, um, you know, evolutionary psychology has some, um, some, um, some stuff in it just to piss off everybody. Right. But my argument that is, if you want a more moral world, if you want more social justice, you can't, you, you can't ignore um, our biological constraints. You have to work with it and see what kind of wiggle room you have to work with. If you ignore it, you're not going to get the results you want. Yep. Yeah, I know. So this is why vegans cause animal suffering. Because they're not focused on. <laughs> no, because the they made people. Farming. They made an easy position. Less. Less popular. I think mm -hmm. it would have been so. You have been. You would have been saving so many animals. So many animals for suffering, if all these activism and all these messaging and all the marketing that the vegans have done was all focused on passing, getting people to support passing legislation against corporations who use farms where animals are treated the worst, right? It was, it's so easy to get, get people. I think left, right, because, you know, people, people would be, you would be able to get people behind this, right? And it would require like very limited investment from people. We were like, hey, don't don't change it. You, you, you're not asking them to change your lifestyle. You're not asking them. You're just asking them to, to call Congress people or like sign this petition, show your support, tr get this hashtag trending of like, oh, McDonald, you know, uh, pass legislation to make like Burger King and McDonald not buy from farms which conditions are bad. People, people are already anti-big corporate. People are already like, oh my God, don't torture animals. Um, it would have been so, like, I'm not saying some people are not doing it. Every time I say that, somebody like, well, some people are doing it. Yeah, but I'm just saying, imagine if all that, all that resources was spent on, that were telling people not to eat meat was spent on this. So I, many I animals a, today would not be tortured if you were doing that. I have a question that's going to get you pissed at me, Armin, but okay. I want to ask it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Let me get ready because when Daddy Armin gets mad at me, I want to cry. Oh. So <laughs> you want to cry? Okay. So, in the eyes of the vegan who think that there's an uh, apocalypse against animals going on, right? Mm -hmm. So they could hear your argument and say you could have minimized so much suffering if they just went this route that I'm telling you to go, right? If you just focused on trying to pass legislation that would minimize the amount of harm in these factories that cause. Uh, animals rather than just going full crazy and saying no we need to stop eating meat altogether is is that correct of your position um wait yes because the second messaging doesn't work and it will actually get you get people to not do anything at all okay so in a way what they're saying is that huh, kathy newman in a way what they're saying is they'll look at your position and they'll say 
no, that's a terrible position because what you're saying is let's replace this bullshit with this less harmful bullshit only because it's less harmful to us. What do they say? Do you think they'd say that? Are you going to bring Islamic reform? I am going to bring Islamic reform. I'm like, what? Because like, I can't help but see parallels there. Yeah, I, I know. I'm ready for this because Alex uh, brought it up one time and I was like, oh, shit. So the difference between, <laughs> for people who don't know what Vincent is talking about, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I don't like Islamic reform. Um, I think Islam should die out completely. And people are like, look, Armin, for Islam, you're saying they go out fully against Islam instead of like being in the middle. Um, and, but with veganism, you're like, oh, this is less harmful. We should just do less harmful instead of going out full and completely abandoning meat. The reason why they're not equal, uh, the same is because I don't think Islamic reform is a step in between atheism and abandoning Islam. I, if it was, I would have supported it. I, w- I don't think it's like, oh, you have atheism or irreligion and then you have athe- abandoning Islam altogether, that's great and Islamic reform is halfway in between and it's better than um, Islamic fundamentalism but it's not good enough so we should completely abandon I don't think it's a step in between. I, um, if it was, I would have completely supported Islamic reform. I think Islamic reform is actually more harmful it's not he- it's not a little bit good it's actually it's the tool that islam and other religions use to survive and stay around it's legit you know it's what I, I i'm actually for baby steps i i'm not an all or none my baby step in between atheism and abandoning islam is doubt skepticism so i'm actually i am okay with methods that because for example if you like let's say you have somebody that is completely believes 100% believes in Islam or Christianity and whatever if I think it's effective activism if you could just make them even if they say or remain Muslim or Christian or whatever if you could get them to just be a little bit skeptical you know like they were 100% sure but now they're just 99% sure I think that's great progress that's great progress that's a step in between and that's great progress, and I'm for that. The difference with th- that, if you if you could get somebody to just doubt a little bit, um, you're being at least the methods to encourage that is logically consistent, it's intellectually honest. You're not lying to people, and it is a baby step. But when you promote Islamic reform, um, you're actually lying to people. You're telling people for the sake of you think like, oh, let me give, let me replace one bad lie with a different lie. I don't like that position. I don't want to lie to people. Um, and, and that's a method that doesn't work. I tell people that Islamic reform, if it worked, I would be for it. When you see liberal Muslims or secular Muslims and stuff, it wasn't Islamic reform that made them liberal. It was other sources of influence outside of Islam that made them abandon Islam a little bit, even they're still Muslim. And Islamic reform comes in after and takes credit for it. So it was never Islamic reform that did anything for these people to become more liberal or secular. I am for Muslims being more liberal and secular, even if they're still Muslim. So I am for baby steps in the method. I just think Islamic reform has no contribution in that process. And Islamic reform is actually doing more harm than good. If Islamic reform was doing a little bit of good, um, but not completely full on atheism, I would be for it. But Islamic reform is doing more harm than good, and that's why I'm against it. So it's not consistent. Okay, with so you think, that, um, so like, okay, so baby steps for veganism would be first just passing legislature that um, is focusing on minimizing, minimizing the amount of pain that the animals are going through, and then veganism, then people just get, uh, well, get mean, rid of meat altogether? Have, if you have the emotional uh, capital and resources for it to go on full on vegan, and because you want to be completely uh, it, I'm f- good on you, right? But what I'm saying that if you're going to call me out for um, not reducing, not going out, you know, reducing, m- maximizing my efforts to reduce suffering, if you want to call me out on that, then you're, yeah, you're right. 
it's not just my eating meat that is uh, shows that I'm not maximizing my efforts to reduce suffering. It's also my air conditioner, right? There are right. many other things that I'm not doing that is maximizing what I can do to reduce suffering. I mean, I, but, I don't think we should be using the word maximizing, though. I think it, a better word just be increasing because they could just it, as easily say, yeah, I'm but not trying many, to like... There are many things I could do that increases my efforts to... Okay, right, increase. but when you... But when you say maximizing, it goes back okay. to what you're originally saying. So it's better to right. just say increasing so you care increase. enough about animals. Yeah. So there is, yeah, but there are many other things that I could do to increase my efforts to reduce suffering for animals or anything else, anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. But instead of, I don't, instead of always thinking about the, I pick, basically, it's picking your battles. I mm -hmm. pick my battles, right? And what, what I try to, the way that you try to motivate others to to care is the same for me. Uh, it's the same um, thing that I do to motivate myself, right? So the marketing that I use for other people to care a little bit rather than not caring at all or caring more than, care more than yesterday, care more than last week, care more than last year. The way that I try to get people to care more is the same way that I try to care, make myself care more, right? About, you know, with... So, I think a vegan would agree with that, yeah. But it's just, again, it goes back to whether... Because most vegans that I see or that I talk to, they, it seems like they would agree with what you're saying. Like, yeah, obviously I could sell my car and feed a couple hundred yeah, starving they kids would in say Africa. Like, but they would say, like, okay, well then go vegan. Like, why can't you, like, why wouldn't you go vegan then? Like, they wouldn't. Because like, there are... Well, their argument would be like just the one thing I'm trying to convince you of is to care enough about animals because you realize that their capacity to feel pain is similar enough to our capacity to feel pain. Right. So well, you I don't care, care enough them. right now. I care right. enough. I care enough to want to push for legislation to make them stop being tortured. But mm -hmm. it make me it, again. This this if this makes me sound evil is because I am evil. The same way that I'm not turning off my air conditioner. Like the what I'm saying is that yes, we are all evil. Our goal should be to be just a little bit less evil every day. Okay, um, I, pre I I I accept the fact that I'm evil because I decided to buy a TV. I decided to buy a higher quality um, camera. I accept that. Yes, I am evil. Every almost everybody is evil to some extent. Mm. And I'm trying to be. The goal should be to like be just be less evil. Wow, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say we're evil. No, I would. How could you not? How could you not say is, I'm evil? Is that your theory of mind? Most people are evil. Almost all people are evil. I've only met one couple in Vancouver that are not evil, but almost everybody <laughs> else. <laughs> I mean, Wait, what, what did part they of the... do to pass your test? Well, they are giving up everything. Oh, okay. To, uh, all their life is going dedicated to reducing oh. suffering. Everything. I, I mean, I wouldn't say we're evil. I would just say that we're morally neutral. And then the willful, like the willful refusal, changes the equation. Doing bad things willfully, like raping and murdering, changes the equation. But I wouldn't In go so far as to say that we're evil just because we are trying to have an equilibrium between our happiness and other people's happiness. I think that's just human nature. And if by def yeah, if that's human human nature, and by definition, we're neutral. No, human nature is evil, like, though. <laughs> I would consider, I would consider we're full on, more, we went full on Christian here. No. But I'm not, again, right. the different, sorry, let me just clarify. When I say it's evil, I'm not condemning us. I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay with the fact that we're evil. My goal is to be make us less evil. Like it's not like I'm not like it's not a judge. I'm not passing judgment on us. I'm I realize, you know, to be I realize that I'm evil, and I accept myself the way I am, and I accept myself even more because of my effort to be less evil. Like I'm not hating on anybody for being evil. This is this is fine. Let's just improve. But sorry, sorry, go on, Chris. Okay. Well, I would, I would actually consider us, I would consider us to be more amoral than anything, at least in terms of what, what doesn't affect us on a personal level. Because most people, hashtag not all, most people will be like, hey, it doesn't affect me, why should I care? You know, 
why should you know, these uh like you were talking about earlier these chickens that are cooped up in these farms and everything mm-hmm. you know well it's not happening to you so why should you care that's what their thought process is and that's why i don't think that the uh suffering like another th- aspect of the suffering argument is if it's not most people would be like if it's not happening to me why should i care so but people tend to care more about stuff that's happening to them them on a personal level so if, if you consider it if you talk about it from a uh environmental perspective because everything that ha- happens in the, new, the to the environment will affect us in the long run on a personal level i so, don't think so i don't think that's true i think most people care about more than just themselves my reference point for what is evil and what isn't is what the general public views as evil that you see in like television shows and movies. That's mm-hmm. if that's what the p- general public thinks is evil, like that guy with a mustache or beard, uh, sort of <laughs> cynically trying to control the world. Uh, then we're not. Most of us don't view frown upon that. Well, because and want to be better than the that. reason why I see us as evil because I don't see the difference, t- the effects of being in action and inaction. I mean, well, most people don't even view that, though. Yeah, but most people are always wrong. So who cares about what most people? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying that they have an opinion on it. I'm right. saying they just don't think about it. Yeah, and I'm, that's like, evil. What, what do you What do you define as evil? What What is evil? What does that word mean for you? Oh, okay. So I guess the okay. So I guess allowing misery. When you could stop it easily, would make it's an evil act. Again, these are just made up words. So it, since they're made up, we could just make it whatever we want. I mean, well, you're, me... you're defining evil post hoc after you've already said what you think evil is. Yeah, but let me let me jump in here a little bit. I know because, <laughs> um, we, we can do that though. It's a, because it's a, I mean because it's such a loose. It's a word that is loosely defined and vague. Then we could, like, if you want to use it, you could just decide what it means, I guess. But go on, I, reject I, your hope. I, I think <laughs> most people would define, um, especially if you're approaching ethics from a rational angle, that evil is something that we would consider malevolent. It's anything that, like, is what? self-suffering, anything that would... Um, right, right. That, would, um, that promotes greed, everything that looks for your self-interest to the absolute exclusion of oh, good. Let's go other with that people definition. and beings behind you, but it's but if you mean by if you define that as evil, then yes, we we're all evil to a certain extent because from a practical sense, there is no way you can live in a world without some kind of consideration for your own practical for your own practical um, for your own practical needs and comforts. It's just not possible. You need to eat. You need to have a roof under your over your head. You need to have some kind of social relationship okay, with no, people no, no, around no. you. And you, I'm not and, talking I, about you know, your needs. Right. I'm talking about your wants, the things that you don't need that you want. Okay. Right, but right, uh, but it branches off some of the, some of that branches off some of your own personal desires, and yeah, but, um, you can never divorce yourself entirely from that. So if you mean by like yes. everyone is evil to that um, to 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 that to to that extent, then yeah, yeah, I would agree with you. But like I, I you know, I wouldn't necessarily classify someone as evil unless they've like. Just okay, so what, here's point, here's I what I would say. Like let's say, like I said, I turn on my air conditioner. I could have turned it off and p- used the money that I would pay the bill to save children from starvation. I could have done that, right? Okay. Um, based on most people's definition of evil, I think if I to keep my air conditioning running, if I had to get somebody to deliver a child in front of to me every morning, and sacrifice a child with like a knife um, and the, like let's say I would get a child every morning I will take a knife I put it right behind her neck here and then boom go like this and the child would just drop dead with no pain every morning I had to do like great air conditioner running every morning um, and if the only cost to me not doing that would be like shit this was a very uncomfortable sweaty warm day because I refuse to sacrifice the child if I'd be like Okay, no, this is too uncomfortable. Bring me the children to sacrifice. I think most <laughs> most people would consider that evil. Most de- people's definition of evil will consider that to be evil, right? Yeah, that's so, pretty. That's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, that is pretty freaking crazy. 
But I am doing that right now. By right. not, but it technically is the same fucking thing. I am doing that right now by not turning this fucker off and using that money to save somebody, a kid from starvation. That is what I'm doing. Right. Uh, so, so uh, using your definition of evil, let's put it in a different in a different way. Let's say people want, uh, hear your argument, they understand it, but they say like, well, at the same time. Society would be better off if we're thinking about society, uh, evil versus good. Generally speaking, society would be better off. It'd be happier. We'd, in we'd increase the net happiness in society if most people adopted the philosophy of trying to find an equilibrium between their happiness and others people's happiness. So they could say, I'm just trying to contribute to that. Yeah, but, but, but that would include death. But that doesn't go against it. That would include you sacrificing a child. You'd be like that. Finding that equilibrium would be include you having to sacrifice a child. And part that, of the uh, the equilibrium equation, though, is the fact that um, as a species, with the emotions that we have, we care about the people who are closer to us and farther away from us. And right. That goes back to so that goes back so, to Paul Bloom's again, um, again argument with animals. Again, with animals, part of that equilibrium would be animals that are not being tortured in front of me. I care about them less. If I had a pet piglet um, that had a name um, and I raised that piglet, I would probably suffer a lot more. That If you tortured that piglet and fed it to me, I would probably be, that would be more traumatic experience to me than all the fucking pigs that have been tortured throughout history, okay? Um, and if And if you did that to a human, I would probably, if you did that to my daughter that I don't have yet, I would probably be scarred for eternity, forever, right? So yeah. I'm a species. I don't care about the animals that I don't see as much as a pet animal that I would have. Uh, so all of those things that you're saying factor in to why I haven't been motivated. I, I, I like meat. I like the taste. I like the easy protein intake that I get from eggs and chicken. Um, uh, I don't like the incon inconvenience right now where I live to be able to find an alternative. I don't like the taste of vegan alternatives, especially where I live in Philippines. If Maybe if you hired me a nutritionist that would just prepare me and cook me every day, uh, vegan food, and, you know, I would be like, sure, go for it. Let's do it. If you paid for that, like, I would go with that, you know. I'm Again, with all the things that you say, uh, emotional constraints, I'm, it hasn't motivated me to not eat meat yet. And does that make me evil? Yeah, it does. A, a vegan and would what, say what, would agree, but they'd probably say something along the lines of yes, but it's much, 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 much easier to get you to convince you to care about these animals than it is to convince you to care about these dying children far, far away from you. So therefore, oh, no. we might as well. It's definitely not. I care. I right now I'm a lot more motivated to ha save human children. Um, I've heard both. Like of by giving away your own personal uh, possessions. To yeah. the point where you only have money enough to live yeah, on I would, breadcrumbs. It would be easier to motivate me to save humans from suffering than animals. Wait, really? Me. That's interesting. So, so you, it's much easier for you to live on breadcrumbs than it is for you to go vegan. Um, if it means, if it means, well, I'm not. I, I'm in neither position right now. I'm not motivated to do either of those for those things. Right, but one's easier but, than the other. Yeah, one is easier than that. And I'd say because, easily because, going because vegan of the is effect, much easier. Because of the effect on... Like, honestly, if I see a ch human child dying from starvation, that moves me more than seeing a piglet, than seeing, like, a chicken die from starvation. It just moves me more. I don't know what to do. That's how it is. Interesting. Well, that Especially, blows my mind. I, I would say I'm also biased for human children than human adults. I would even say that. Like human Personally. children, yeah. I mean, if I, if I would, I don't know again why, but I'm wired in a way to to be moved more from children suffering than adults suffering. I don't. I'm not saying I don't care about adults. I'm just wired that way. I have to work with my wiring. I have to work with what I have. I have to work with my brain. Sure. I mean, but that's going. That's just on your end. Do you think that most people, for most people, it'd be easier to convince them to go vegan than to go near homeless? No. Okay. So that that's not. Equivalent. You have to. The, if the same sacri for most people, the same level of sacrifice 
the same level of sacrifice to get them to help humans will probably motivate them more than to help to, to than to get them to help animals unless it's cute animals cute animals like if you if you try to get people to save dolphins it's easier than to get them to save sharks right it's easier to get people to care about baby seals than than fucking octopuses or something like that Again, the reason why they care about cute animals like dogs, kittens, whales, and shit like that is because what does cuteness mean? Cuteness means human features, big eyes mm-hmm. or something like that, right? So th- even their bias towards animals is because of their speciesism. It makes them more. It can be because easily because... demonstrated in cognitive psychology. It's easily okay. demonstrated. We even have a preference of triangles facing this way. Ooh. Toddlers have a preference for triangles facing this way because it matches an eyes and a nose. That's how deep this goes. And this is why we see faces in like, um, you know, like street signs or something, or you see faces in things that are not faces. We want to see human, we want to see humanness in things that are not human. It's part of our evolution. I like how yeah, Susanna the, the, makes my gibberish sound so smart. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the problem that I see with the problem that I see with your argument, Armin, is that you're not taking into consideration the fact that most that um, yes, obviously we choose humans over animals, but the fact of the matter is that these humans that we're dealing with are so far away from us, and their experiences is so different from us that it's mm-hmm. difficult for us to relate. Whereas the animals, we're eating the animals on a daily basis; it's right there, right in front of us. And when we right see in- videos of them suffering and getting slaughtered then it makes a much more, I would argue, it would make a bigger emotional impact than that would in, induce someone to become vegan more so than somebody would induce to be going nearly homeless. So it's well, much easier for someone to go vegan than it is to go completely minimalist. Okay, so first of all, I don't think so. Because first of all, if the videos worked, so would the videos of the humans if they were far away. You know what I mean? So like you're like, oh, video, the humans well, it does are far work away. on a lot of people. Yeah. But it also backfires on a lot of people. A lot of people, like, if you exhaust them with, like, care about this, now care about this, now care about this, now care about this, people are like, you know what, fuck this world, everything is evil, I can't do anything, so I don't, I'm, st- I'm going to stop caring, right? Oh, uh, that really... But, go ahead, Chris. Oh, it really goes back to what I said earlier, though, about most, most, most people being like, oh, if it doesn't happen to me, why should I care about it? I don't, the, I don't the think people, is, the, animal the, suffering, the animal suffering isn't affecting the people on a personal level, so if it's not affecting them on a personal level, then they generally won't care about it. I really don't think that's the case, Chris. I think we do all have a desire to, like we're humans and other social animals do have a desire not to just, not just to be loved, but to, to love other things than them. And to care for things other than them. I just think that's a limited resource that has to be spent. Why, like, you have to be, like, very careful with where you spend that. It's, it's an emotional capital that you can't tap into too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it is there. I think most people, the only people that don't have that are psychopaths. I right. think everybody has that to a certain level. But it's not something that could be used endlessly. Yeah, that, I mean, that's why people analyze the consequences. So when someone thinks, should I go minimalist or should I go vegan? Well, the consequences of going minimalist is that I'd probably be hungry a lot of the time. I wouldn't have many things to entertain myself with, such as television sets or video games. Whereas if you go vegan, you still have all those things. So if you go minimalist, your happiness level goes down to two. Whereas if you go vegan, your happiness level goes maybe down from nine to like six. Oh, so mine goes down it, to two. I could tell you that. Are you, <laughs> you love me that much? Yeah, uh, man, I would yeah. give up. I would give up my tea. I would go minimalist if it was the cost of being able to eat meat. So, well, like, I mean, if, if you're minimalist, if, if, by definition, you no, wouldn't be able to. If, if I had to, okay, if you were like, give up meat, but keep your TV and your, I don't know, I don't have much, but everything you possess, keep, um, but give up meat. And the second scenario was like, give up everything that you don't need to just be able to continue living. Um, give up your, you know, TV. Give up your second screen. Give up your air conditioning, um, and you can keep eating meat. I would like, yeah, I would like to keep eating meat. Thank okay, you. I'm gonna try to convince you out of this. Okay, so let's say, 
go go meat, right? Like, so, so, um, go minimalist. The right. only thing that you can keep in your house, therefore, are your bed, and that's it. Your your room and your bed. No air conditioning. Nothing. It's just your room and your bed, and maybe your like your stove and stuff to cook food. Mm-hmm. That's it. Or just go vegan. Wait, in that, wait, in that diet. scenario, I get to eat meat, right? Yeah, you get to eat meat. Right. But you're literally living in a one room house I my, with I a have my bed laptop and, and my Wi Fi. No, get rid of your no, get rid of your laptop. You could what are you talking no, about? If you have a laptop, I that's that's hundreds of requires, dollars. I need to be able to do my activism. I know oh, that's laptop. true. Okay, yeah. So you you do need jobs. Okay, so yeah, keep your laptop, keep yeah. your Wi Fi. But aside from that, you're living in a square room with right. one bed. Either that or j- keep the house that you have right now. Keep the air conditioning. Keep your kitchen. Mm-hmm. Keep your room. Keep your TV, your video games. Just right. take meat out of your diet. No, I I meat. I need the meat. How is that blows my mind. That really? <laughs> Dude, like, well, I'll be completely honest. What? I won't give up meat because I like how it tastes. That's the only reason I won't give it up. I just like how it tastes. I mean, that's most people. Yeah, but I mean, what are, like think about the pleasures that we have in life. Like it's most the pleasures that we have in life is the two main ones is what you feel with your genitals and what you feel with your tongue. Well, if you're sometimes incel, they're the same. If you're an but, incel. What? If you're an incel, it's just your tongue. <laughs> right. Like, well, I mean, no, if you're an incel, the pleasure comes from your hand. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, like, I mean, bro. that's the bait. We have like we have. 70 to 90 years to live. Um, and those are the main two sources of pleasure. I'm not going to give up on half of that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I mean, you can find vegan meals that are just as tasty as, as oh, meat well, meals. Well, I mean, and if you could, like, yeah, I mean, if you could do that for me, I mean, I can't do that. If you could, like, I mean, it is for me. Because you're lazy and you won't give uh, Susanna her credentials. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have actually, the funny thing is, I have actually tried. I actually went vegan for a month. I went completely vegan for for one month. And it, then I, and it did, just didn't taste the same. To me, it, personally, it didn't taste the same. I mean, I've greatly reduced down, greatly reduced my beef intake. Because you know, I like I like I prefer chicken more than anything else, anyways. Because that's my favorite meat. But just be patient. The other reason I so, 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 yeah, so, so Chris, let me artificial meat. Wait, wait, Mark, louder, Mark, louder. Just be patient for, for about another twenty years when they actually um start cloning and producing like genuine god honest beef uh, yes. or, or meat for us to eat. But after that, like you know, there 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 will definitely be no excuse. To consume animals anymore because yeah, you're but we don't the- need an excuse. Oh, yeah, definitely, we don't right. need an so, excuse so, so, because that will this. probably taste even better than the meat we have right now. Imagine when they grow meat in labs, they're going to be like, just make the fat the perfect percentage and everything. With it's the- semantics. It's semantics. So I'm just saying. I'm just beef. saying. Like once yeah. we have that available, and the moral yeah. argument. I mean, is, I yeah, and I admit, like, okay, by the way, I admit, if you could get me somebody to come, like, and make me vegan food that tastes as good as as healthy um and with this right of you know protein to calorie ratio perfect the same amount and filling and you know if you could do that for me then i you know great i will eat i will go vegan but you have to pay for the oh, person I mean, that does the preparation for me and everything like here where i am that's going to be very difficult and inconvenient but go ahead, Chris. You know, uh, to uh, com- to be completely honest, though, I mean, a vegan diet actually is healthier, and no. it's also more. No. Yeah, actually, yes, yes, it is actually. It actually is more. It actually is healthier. Uh, it depends and, on who you are. Huh? Yeah, it, it also depends on what you consume as well, and it's actually better for the environment. Why but you? like you said, though, you know, like it's like you said, Armin, and I said. You know, it's we, we won't go vegan because we like how meat tastes. So, right. so let me ask you this quick, Chris. Um, is the fact that bacon tastes yummy, ooh, it's just yummy in your tummy, does that justify you contributing to a system in which 
cows are being taken away from their from their calves and they're being slaughtered and suffering immeasurable pain in factories. Are you like do you think that justifies it? No, I don't think that justifies it. Well, but bacon I also think that bacon doesn't come from beef. But <laughs> oh, well, I'm just saying. Right, <laughs> hey, I understand what you're saying. I just stand to turn off her camera and mic and just turned it back on to like mention that. <laughs> but, but, so... I understand what you're saying. I don't, I don't think that I don't think that justifies it. But you know, it's like it tastes good and it's not ha- happening to us. So, whatever. But do you think you know, someone could have provided a convincing enough argument to the point where you'd be like, oh, shoot, maybe I should care more about this? Like, do you think people could be reasoned into being vegans because they recognize that you can't justify it? Uh, some people, yes. Other people, no. So, like, Armin, no, obviously. I, I actually don't think <laughs> yeah, that's the think best way to get really them. Wanna, if you really want to try to convince... Oh, sorry. sorry. So I think if you really want to convince people to be vegan, go vegan. I really think you should you should argue from an from an environmental perspective. Mm. Wait, okay, Susanna, what did you? What, how are we gonna answer? As well, I'm eating. Oh. <laughs> um, are you meat? I'm eating fish. Um. So I was gonna say that I don't actually think the best way to get people to be vegan is to reason with them i think you have to play on their emotions Mm. you have to make an emotional appeal i don't think reason is the best way i think you have to make an emotional appeal which is why all these documentaries have converted thousands of people to veganism like food inc what is it fork over knives um there was another really big vegan documentary that came out recently or like watching footage of animals before they're about to be slaughtered, you know, like that is very, it, it, it just gets your amygdala going, you know, it triggers you and it, it, once you see and witness, it mandates a whole different level of action instead of this coldly calculating rational argument that's not going to win over most people you have to make an appeal to emotion i think that's how most people come around to a lot of new positions i have a question for vincent but vincent has to pretend that he's a vegan convinced by vegan like can you defend try to try to steal in veganism and tell okay. me what how would you respond to the scenario right i will do my best and by the way, I agree with Susanna's framing of the best message. The best, me- like it also that's uh, that's the same thing with atheist activism as well, with all forms of activism. So that's I agree with that, and that's why some of my methodology with my activism has been changing. But anyways, let's say let you you have a gun and you are in the forest and you see a deer, and you, I'm with you, and I tell you like, look, that deer, it will probably very likely die a very slow and painful death every scenario that you think about that deer dying cannot not be painful it cannot be slow right it is it, either gonna one day starve from to death and it's all like it's, it's an old deer right like it's not like it doesn't have much more life to enjoy it's either gonna be attacked by a bunch of hyenas and if you've seen hyena attacks they don't really start eating when you're dead okay they, they start munching on you while you're still feeling every fucking thing, right? Um, it's, it's either going to be a very slow, torturous death, or it's going to be starvation, which is another form of slow, torturous death. But if we point this gun at this deer and manage to get a headshot, we could, uh, we could potentially save a lot of suffering to this deer, but even if we miss, if we just run as soon as we get it, and just make sure we kill it fast, it's still going to be less painful than any other form of death that this deer could experience. Then, we, first of all, we get a lot of good meat, and we get to have a barbecue right here and now, but also we're going to be saving this deer a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Would you agree that we should shoot this deer? Most likely. So I'm a consequentialist in the sense okay. that I think whatever minimizes the amount of pain is the route right. that I'm going to go. So okay. if, if I were to find out that 
that extra bit of life that the deer has right before it gets mauled by hyenas or whatever, um, it would appreciate that little bit of life more than it would not be an appreciated being mauled. Mm. Then I would just say, let it get mauled by the hyenas. And so overall that was a net but, good. If however, it was a net negative, then I'd say, let's just shoot him and eat him. Sure. So I'm a how are, how are myself. you, how are you ever supposed to know that in the moment of making that decision? Well, you don't, but this was just a theoretical question. So this given is that, why, yeah, theoretics and all this stuff isn't. Well, that well, I think they're good. Me. I think they're good to fully understand one's moral positions. I don't think they're practical in the sense that I'm going to be able to know what to do immediately. But for the sake that's of understanding okay. no, one's own moral that. positions, that's good. Yeah, it's What's kind of the, like in physics when you try to f uh, figure out how forces work, and you always assume there's no pressure from air, and there's no friction. Yeah. I mean, you need to start without assuming all those things, even though Neglect it's not air really, it, which is well, not. You, yeah, go on. Let's turn that around a little bit. What about like, um, like let, let's say like, um, not deers, but like say wolves or or, or, or whatever, um, and. You have a problem of overpopulation in which, like, just an overabundance of wolves can really fuck with the food chain mm -hmm. in a in a um, in in an area that which could harm other animal species, um, other animals, and just very it could very very likely increase the level of suffering in that area for for um, for for these other animals. Would hunting wolves in Eating their meat in that circumstance be justified? Oh, I gotta use the restroom. What? Oh, so if he killed the wolves? No, I mean it's under the circumstance, Armin, because like uh, we're talking about more or less what's the most moral course of action you can do you can do here, and if if we're concerned about the end goal of morality being able to, I mean, reduce suffering and raise well being, then if there's an argument to be made if wolves are just like throwing off the food chain they're they're feeding off other species and um eventually their actions are going to come back come back around and bite them in the ass because once the food chain is screwed up they'll be suffering in themselves okay so in so that circumstance there's probably a just it, it could probably be justified to, right. to hunt wolves to keep their population under control yes but no more and you could consume what you hunt in that area i don't think there's a problem with that but yeah um, yeah i don't see a problem aspect, with that yeah. either unless somebody could point out what the problem is in the comment section because i don't see a problem with that you're actually helping by hunting you're helping the animals by hunting them right and, well, not, and not just them but also the, the the other species the other living species around them yeah. that, that have that same kind I mean, of that's, that's how policies yeah. with hunting works like they come up with the numbers that you need to um <clears throat> The numbers that you need to deer that you kill, but here's the here's the thing. Um, this one actually, New Vincent needs to be back for this one. He should have taken his like he could go pee and have his like his headphone is like uh, wireless. I don't know why he just didn't. Oh, he's back. I don't think we're trying to hear him pee. No, but no. he has a mute option on his microphone. <laughs> So, Vincent, given that you just admitted to Susanna and I that you don't know, like, we cannot know what the preferences of the animals would be, why is it that vegans assume that all the animals in factory farms and shit, is that what they call factory farms? Factory farming? Yeah. Generic terms. Uh, yeah, so why are they all, why do we assume that if we ask them, would you rather never have lived um, rather than live this life? Most, uh, most of them, if they could speak and if they could communicate and if they were, you know, have their the mental capacity to understand what the question is, most of them would be like, yeah, fuck this life is so miserable. I wish I was never born. Maybe, maybe if they could speak, they would say like, you know what, this life sucks, but I prefer living and experiencing life over not living ever. And if that was their answer, then you probably we should all go eat more burgers and everything to make sure that they get the chance to experience life. Because if you can't get rid get rid of the meat industry, none of them would have ever been born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what they might say, I'm saying what they might say, was that what we're also trying to fix is a broken system. 
in which you have animals that are being born, propped into existence, um, and they're being slaughtered. That's a system in which we could have replaced with a system that are, with animals that are naturally being born and living a happy life in the wildlife. This many animals would never be born. We have like, do you think we would actually this meat industry? We we go like, let's have like millions of billions of chickens every. Like, how many chickens do, we, do they make every day? Like all the cows and all the chickens and all the you know pigs. You know how? You know, do you think like without the meat industry, any of these would be born? It would well, be I think a fraction. They adopt, right. I think they adapt an antinatalist uh, sort of position when it comes yeah, to this sort most, of thing. Most humans are not antinatalists, so why would no, you right, but, animals? No, be? but well, most most humans aren't being taken into gas chambers and being killed, are they? Yeah, but even humans that are even the humans that go end up in gas chambers. A lot of them wouldn't say I would never. I wish I was never born. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know about I that. I mean, maybe they would. Maybe they would. And I don't know. How, do vegans know? No, but again, that goes back to them trying to change the system in which animals are being born naturally and living. No, they the wouldn't be born. Naturally. This, this not being born naturally. They, no, right. But that they're changing the system. I'm not saying that they would say no, that the the same animals are the being system, born. There's no way you would live in the world. There's no system that this many animals would be born other than, other than in the world that you had the meat industry. The amount of animals that are being born in the wildlife and not suffering the conditions that they are currently suffering to be a factory farming. Wildlife without... is more suffering. The animals that live that are born in wildlife suffer more than animals in the factory farms. Well, in the wildlife, it'd be 99% living normally and that 1% getting mauled by hyenas. Whereas in factory farming, animals it's are, it's really like 70% living and suffering. Most of the time, animals are starving in wildlife. Yeah. Well, I don't most know of that. the time, they're starving. Every I fucking day is a struggle to not die from starvation. Every fucking day in wildlife is more for most animals is a, is a struggle to not die from starvation. I'm not Even sure about true. that. Um, that was yeah, true ahead. about us before we became civilized. But go on. I mean, even even if you know, even even if everybody became vegan, even if everybody in the world tomorrow became vegan, there would actually still be factory farms. Because people would still need to put need to slaughter animals for for other animal food like dog food and cat food, you know. Because from my experience working at a working at a uh, dog food factory, fifty percent of fifty percent of what went into the dog food was meat. It was either beef, beef parts, chicken parts, lamb parts different types of meat so you would still have factory farms so becoming vegan wouldn't really reduce that it would only reduce it to reduce it just to a certain level it wouldn't reduce it completely though mm -hmm. so what i'm thinking is that just as an uh, just as humans have evolved to feel generally content with their lives even though there's a lot of misery going on animals probably evolved the same level of happiness in their lives otherwise they wouldn't have been able to evolve fruitfully so I'm thinking that, sure, they feel a lot of suffering in their lives, they're constantly starving, but they feel enough happiness in their lives to be able to go about living their little animal lives. And that happiness outweighs the negative aspects of living the animal life. And so what a vegan same, might argue is that that is preferable. Same thing with animals in the farms. Well, what a vegan would say is that that is a preferable situation to animals in a farm. You don't know that. Maybe animals in the farm are like, I, I mean, I, this, this cage is very fucking annoying. But they they seem to be throwing food in front of me every fucking day. I'd rather have this than having to be worried about not starving. Like if maybe you don't know, maybe the animals. It, I don't know if this is true, but neither do vegans. Maybe if the animals were like, "Hey, would you let her every day starve and be nervous about not being able to live to see tomorrow because you didn't manage to find food, or but be able to run free in the wild." And also be nervous about every fucking day be possibly being jumped on by something, very, an animal with very sharp fangs and being slowly killed to death. Um, or would you rather be in a cage, um, very s small quarters, but you get food in front of you without having to worry about it every single day? Maybe half of them would be like, no, give me the life, wildlife. Another half would be like, okay, cage with food every day without starvation. We don't know what they would prefer. <laughs> well, we, let's translate it to humans. Would a human mother prefer having her child taken away from her and being locked up in a cage until she's officially shredded or being slightly hungry 
for the rest of her life, but she still has her child, and she doesn't. Well, the alternative would be never, never have a child. The child would, no, you, you would have never had the child without the meat industry. It's well, technically it killing. It would technically be killing the child by yeah, not having and, it to begin with. And, and that adds to the trauma that they have. Yeah. Okay. So one thing I agree with you. One thing that needs to become illegal immediately is <clears throat> separating children from their mother in animal form. That is that is an easy choice. That is something that needs to be like bam, bam, bam. Before I go to the before I go use the facilities, I wonder how much. Uh, I wonder if vegans would have less of a discontention with people eating meat if the meat that we get comes from free roam animals, animals that are just free to roam around the pasture or whatever, instead of animals that are stuck inside hundred cows packed at one time inside of a inside of a small barn or something like that. I, I don't would think they have they, would, <laughs> intention. I, I don't think they would be they they would be so they would be they they would be so unhappy about that because using the using that example I brought up earlier about like having one overpopulation for the the yeah the, the, the overpopulation of one species so through the food chain that inevitably causes suffering not just for this this is like i was saying before that inevitably causes more suffering for that species in the long run and this and the surrounding um, sentient beings around them so hunting in that regard to keep the population under control so you, can, you still have an ecosystem there's some moral case to be made to, to, to justify hunting and eating meat in that regard i would say so so you have to run the passive vegan but i, I think it's, it might be a morally it might be a morally defensible position that's just my take for now, without knowing more. And I, you know, I also wonder if they would have less of a discontention if not only that the animals are, were free roam, but they're also killed in more uh, a more humane humane ways ways than they are killed right now. Because I know, I mean, I already know that most of the animals that get killed and killed for our meat aren't exactly killed in very in humane ways. Mm-hmm. But, but if they were more humane ways, I wonder if there would be less of a discontention than what we're doing right now. Right. What What was that one vegan guy that you debated, Armin, that got pissed at you? What was his name? I forgot his name. Well, he probably his name doesn't deserve to be known, anyways. Um, what do you think his? <laughs> what, what do you think his? I stru- like, what What was his main argument against you when he said that you're supporting the Holocaust? Like, what 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 do you think was his strongest point? Strongest point. He didn't have any strong points. Well, his, his, well he, what was his, his main point? His main point was like, if people heard you supporting, like he admitted that I'm being consistent between humans and animals, mm-hmm. but that means I'm. But then he said, realized that that means I'm a, I'm fucking insane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like you're you're in support of. He kept on saying you're in support of Holocaust of disabled people. That's what he said. Oh, that's right. That's what it was. Man, I'd kill to listen to that debate. I want to know <laughs> what, what he said. And just, I I hope, Vic, asking, Vicom told me... We're not asking the important question what? of, is the consecrated Eucharist vegan? Oh, <laughs> is it? We is need it? to ask these important questions. That's is quite it? a Catholic vegan. Exactly. Is it? I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's an un... The, the actual wafer is like yeast free it's just a wafer oh okay, okay. but i mean i'm but talking it's the flesh about, of like, jesus exactly exactly mm. wait so, so vegans is, cannot be catholic is, is the consecrated eucharist vegan okay as a vegan a vegan would say like that would be one meat i'm okay with eating because jesus is jesus not suffering okay jesus is not suffering if animals were consenting I would How dare you? <laughs> he suffered and died on that cross. But consented, though. Like, he's not suffering from us. Like, is, every time we're chewing on that, is he going like, ah! Like, is he suffering every time we're chewing on like that? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, Isn't that. it weird that Catholics have a little or maybe cross like, on, their, yeah. on their neck? No, go ahead. Isn't it weird that Catholics have the cross on the neck as if Jesus would like that? Like, yeah, cool. The thing that killed me, wear it on your neck, surround as. I uh, think he would be traumatized when he comes back. He would be crossing like, these crosses everywhere. He'd be like, what the fuck? Like, what? We have yeah, flashbacks. <laughs> like, yeah. why is this all everywhere? I think, it was, <laughs> I think it was Bill Hicks who actually said, if, uh, no, not Bill Hicks, but it was Sam Harris who said, 
If Jesus had died in the 1970s, would we would we would wear electric chairs around our necks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to say one last <laughs> thing about I want to say before we go to Jesus, I want to talk about wow that what that what that was such a segue. <laughs> but I mean, one that asking the important questions. I don't it know is what, important. I don't no, know actually, how to contribute to this conversation, but I can ask these questions. That is a very important question, and actually, um, Jesus also gave gave out fish, didn't he? So how do Christians be vegan? Like how how do they? Anyways, one last thing about animal farms i want to mention is what in response to what vincent said if you can hear me vincent can you hear me yeah what's up oh you say like animals living in nature do you realize that most animal farms wouldn't survive half a day in in a while like animal farms are not like zebras you know, animals and, and animal farms yeah, the animals like chickens cannot survive in the wild, and the pigs and the cows. The way we, these are not animals that can survive by themselves without human help in the wild. Like if you set them free, mm-hmm. they will all starve to death. Yeah. Um, so, well, I would. I don't know what an art, what a vegan would argue. I'd argue, so keep the tainted animals that aren't going to survive in the wild. We might as well do with them as we please because they're already screwed. But that's just sort of uh, what what is it referred to in economics? Um, marginal costs or something? Uh, it's a moral calculus. It's a moral calculus. All right. So okay. So that you got. I got my answer. Going back so to Jesus. Back. Jesus. Okay. Jesus. When he had, you know, when they gave him two fishes, and then he came. So if, what would a Christian vegan do with that story? He made two. He. The two fishes turn into. I can tell into... you the easy out right now. I can tell you the easy out right now. What's, what's the easy out? It's allegory. Wait, so Jesus actually didn't do that? I mean, so. It's, to no, met, it's, it's met metaphorically. Getting memories from my Catholic Jesus education. Um, it didn't actually happen. He just it was just a symbology of. I think. Of something, yeah. I think most Catholics believe that that actually happened. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that 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 they don't believe it actually happened. I'm saying that if if you ever had a, if we ever got to a point in society where like it's absolutely 100 percent wrong. To, I'm talking um, about today's vegan Christians that believe that that st- story actually Never mind. happened. Never mind. Yeah, today's today's vegan Christians who believe that story actually happened. How do they justify? I can have a justification for it. Those other fishes that were made out of that fish, they were. They were made dead. Like they didn't, like they were already, he copied the fishes into more fishes, like he copy pasted them. But they never, <laughs> they never, they never suffered because he just made like a thousand dead fishes. By the way, already... I, have to, uh, I have to make a small correction. It was two fish and a loaf of bread. Yeah, but he made it two fish and a loaf of bread and he turned it into how many? Like he, Multiplied it. Five thousand, I believe it was. Five thousand. Okay, so all the other five thousand fish that he made out of the two. First of all, he didn't actually kill the two fishes. Somebody oh. just brought them to him. No. But the five thousand fish uh, that he what? It was to feed five thousand people. Okay, whatever amount of fish that it takes to take meat, it doesn't matter. Come on. ah, Chris, they're getting too technical. They're getting too technical. Whatever number of fish. Assuming every person got one fish, let's say there was five thousand fish. Jesus didn't make the, Jesus didn't make them living fishes that they had to be killed. He just made dead fishes. So those fishes were never suffering. He just like that. So that's what, that's how a vegan can get out of it. Plus, the fish but, they were there to start off with were not a product of factory farming. Right. Wait, fishes are never a product of factory farming. There's factory yeah, fishing. Are. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay, no. Oh, yeah, it's a big industry. Wait, are the fishes the are fishes suffering in factory <clears throat> fishing? They're not. Yeah, from what I know, fish, it's not fish great. Don't feel pain, right? Huh? Yeah, they're they uh, feel pain. Uh, uh, yes, they do. Uh, in the past 15 years, Braithwaite and other fish biologists around the world have produced substantial evidence that, just like the mammals and birds, fish also experience conscious pain. No, of course uh, they, of course they experience. I pain. actually don't. Oh, I didn't know that actually. For some reason, I always associated like what is it called, pescatarianism or something like that. The reason why people are that is because they think fish don't feel pain. Oh no, fish experience. What? 
I've yeah. never heard that. Most they people have a just, on their that's percent. a good. Yeah, there's yeah, some there's some people out there who ground. don't eat. There's some people out there who don't eat um, mammals, but they'll eat fish. It's just hard to be sympathetic towards fish. They don't have that many human features. Just watch Finding Nemo, and you'll you'll feel bad about them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pick, look at the Nemo. Nemo has more human features than normal fish. That's why. Yeah, he's made to look that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 when, I, when I watched Finding Nemo, my only thought was, why the hell did that damn thing get eaten right away? It's so annoying. <laughs> Imagine how many. <laughs> Imagine how many kids would care about ne- Nemo being found if they made Nemo look like actual fish. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, they did that with, uh, was it March of the Penguins? Where they gave actual penguins? No, it was Farce of the Penguins. Penguins sorry. are cute already. You can't do that. With pen- penguins are cute. Oh, March of the really Penguins cute. was also just a documentary. No, no, I'm thinking of Farce of the Penguins. It's a mockumentary of oh. March. And they gave the penguins actual voices. That's funny. There was round, happy feet. Round shapes are cute. <laughs> happy <laughs> feet. <laughs> no, round things are cute. Yeah. We have a we have a preference for them. I think fat and people. Is. Wait, why they have their own broken tuxedo? <laughs> so that makes, no, don't take that better. out of context. Please. Don't. I didn't hear what you said, Vince. Oh, thank God. All right, let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I missed it. I was thinking. I was thinking it was about vaguely fat shaming. <laughs> it wasn't even vaguely. <laughs> oh my round, god! Hey, you're right. Round shapes are cute in animals, but not in cute in humans. Why is that? Actually, round you shapes like are spiders. cute in. Do you like spiders? They're round shaped. I love spiders. You Ew, love spiders? spiders are gross. The spiders are spiders great. Are awesome. don't know I used to li- I used to like spiders, but now I love spiders. Ever since I realized that they eat co- cockroaches. Aaron, in, in the like, Philippines, where do, like, wait, what type what, of spider eats cockroaches? The 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 one that I found here. I'm so sad that we killed them. I need to find more hunters. Do you what have cockroaches they? in your house? Not anymore. Because I got something that is a, like a trap, but I wish I didn't have to. I, w- I wish there was a, like a battle going on somewhere in the corner. Like if I knew that the cockroaches are being attacked and killed by spiders in my house, that would be, I would that would be awesome. That would be it. Oh, hun- I, hun- huntsman spiders. Huntsman, huntsman. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They like they look epic. They they they're scary, and I like that. And I wish like I could buy some. I wish that I wish that I we didn't kill that one. I had to kill it because my sister in law was scared. But <laughs> but now I regret killing that spider. I really feel ashamed for killing it. I, I wish I'm ask. viciously allergic to spiders, so I can't I have to I have to ask this. Ali was giving you shit for trying a scorpion in the Philippines. Have you tried eating a spider yet? I no I, they don't eat scorpions in Philippines. I ate that in Thailand. Oh. Oh, never mind. Sorry, that's like that was you, entire, have... No, I I have eaten um, spiders and a whole bunch of other bugs in Thailand, like uh, worms, uh, cockroaches. They all taste the same. I think the reason why they taste the same is because it's mostly the seasoning that they put on it that I'm tasting rather than the bug itself. I don't know what. They're all just crunchy, very very crunchy. It's kind of oh, like eating chips. Something, Jesus. It's very. It's not really bad. It's like it's kind of like eating like something like chips or something. It's not bad at all. Mm. They don't mm. have much taste. I think what I was tasting is whatever they were fried in. Sounds like you're eating French fries or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Jesus. Yum. Or, or... <laughs> I don't think I would actually. I would. I don't think I would actually be ever to be able to eat a bug because I would look at it and know that it's a bug. And I don't care how many how much season or what you do to it, my brain couldn't allow my the part of my brain that controls taste could, could just couldn't shut it off itself just enough to be like, okay, I'm just gonna be like, this is not a bug, I'll close my eyes, I'll still know it's a bug because I will see that it's a bug. Would you guys eat something that was made out of chips in the shape of a bug that was had the exact same texture as crunchiness and taste as a bug, but it wasn't a bug? Or oh, just the shape is enough for you, Vincent, not to eat it? Yeah, uh, I hate bugs. Yeah. I think they look disgusting. 
I I, 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 I don't like that was so fast. mouth. What? I'd be so curious. I'm a very curious person. I mean, so I guys, would have to try it just to do it. You know they sell these in the United States, guys. You don't have to go to Thailand to be able to get bugs. Yeah, I just don't know the, the local spots. <laughs> I need to just investigate. Well, I'm locally near, near here, they, 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 they have a, rest, a burger joint um, nearby that sells um, exotic meats. Uh, except with exotic meats. Um, burgers made with exotic meats, but like you know, I've never heard of anyone actually selling Amazon. like. Buy them on Amazon. They they have like stacks on Amazon. Really? It's not the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to know. Oh. Forget it. <laughs> no, are you talking to like candies? Like, what are you talking about, Armin? Like, what they have on Amazon? The actual bugs. No, but I mean, like, it's usually prepared in a way, right? Like, are you talking about, like, bugs to, like, crickets to feed your lizards? Or are we talking no, about, like, No, you have like, snacks, prepared... scorpion yeah. snacks that you could buy on Amazon to eat, like, as munching, like, for human consumption. <laughs> I think, I mean, last time I checked, they were available. Let me, let me do some Googling. Scorpions. Yeah, it's Amazon. I have to check this out. Oh, They're very, my I mean... God, they have barbecue <laughs> larvae. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Holy shit. Get some. Oh my god. I mean, hey, are vegans against that? They don't have a central nervous system. So they should be okay with eating larvae. And let me emo Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people are saying that in the future, bugs are going to be one of our major sources of protein anyways that'll help us move away from they're not oh, as tasty. They're not. I, I don't. I'm not saying it's tasty. I'm saying it's going to be a major source of protein. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. And it's it's um, so. you know, way more cost effective and not as many CO2 emissions to. I make don't a think that's true. Of bugs. The reason why I don't think that's true is because if you are the pro, for cost efficiency, plants would be more cost efficient than bugs. Don't you know? To so why would you feed the bugs unless you could actually just get the bugs that are already out there? But why would you feed the bugs plants if you're if you're like running out of resources and we need to save money because they don't? It, it's not like the taste is not that much better for you to go from plant to the reason why we go from plant instead of plant to meat because it just tastes so goddamn good. My mouth is weathering. Right <laughs> so, and, also, and also because it's just very efficient, you know, protein source of protein. But you know, you know, when it comes to not efficient like environmentally or economically, but efficient for your body you know, body consumption. You know. But um, when it comes to bugs, it's more efficient than chicken and beef. But efficiency, if, if, if efficiency is the only metric. You might as well just stay with plants. Like you don't get that much extra taste with bugs. I mean, maybe my taste is it's the crunchiness is fun though. To be fair, like sometimes you need your food to be crunchy, and bugs offer. That. I mean, potatoes also offer that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. potatoes don't have that much protein. Never mind. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a starch. <clears throat> Full they, they, they do have a lot of potassium in them. Actually, potatoes. You really can't do potatoes. much better than and chicken and fish. When it comes to nutritional value, chicken, fish, especially fish, and I love fish. Oh my fish. god! And also mussels and oysters. Like when it comes to getting, and also um, so tasty. Oh, you're making me want to go back home and get that. Because I grew up in, like, you know, a place that's one of the best seafood in the world. And we would literally get mussels and oysters out of my grandparents' beachfront, you know? Like, we'd yeah. do it ourselves. Like, ooh, you're making me so hungry. Right, right now, after this call, I'm going to go buy food. And I'm going to get one chicken, one full chicken. I'm going to buy two fishes, milk fish. And I'm going to buy one kilo of mussels. And one kilo of mussels here, this is, this is the beauty of living here where I am, is 100 pesos, which is $2. Holy $2 cow. for a kilo, one kilo of mussels. Like, oh why my would... God. Yeah. I envy you right now. I really do. 
<laughs> so mm-hmm. it's really hard to find me a better way to you know like this is why i can't go vegan like come on like can you get this much nutrition especially if i need muscles for zinc as well like there's not that much and also mm-hmm. like liver and you know really you can't do it's not just about also protein and calories and all that it's also a lot about getting all the um minerals that you need you can technically do that with plants it's just harder vincent you have to admit it's harder if you limit an entire food groups it's very difficult to get everything you need one of the things that i'm concerned about is i'm not going to be able to go vegan because i am so 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 skinny and underweight and most people that go vegan lose weight i can't afford to do that so i am we mentioned this actually a few podcasts ago where i'm five seven five eight around there probably closer to five seven not five you're, you're five seven vincent we're, we're about the same height yeah yeah so, so i'm oh. five seven i am a hundred and uh i was 125 pounds i gained weight during this quarantine uh-huh. i'm currently 131 but Good i am so underweight Oh, yeah, look at that. But once this quarantine's over, I'm going to go back to being, uh, what's that one guy's name? Uh, Skinny Pete or something? <laughs> so, uh, what? Why are some weights at home? Oh, dude, I have some. Where are they? Oh, uh, I think they're downstairs. Uh, yeah, so I got some. I literally mentioned this. I literally mentioned this in the last uh, two podcasts ago. Uh, I have like two eight pound weights, which is good enough for me for the moment. I know Eight? that. I know that, like, Eight pounds, yeah, they're teeny, teeny. Uh, it's not gonna do anything for you. It's not good enough for anybody. My aunt, got, before she died from cancer, she was like, couldn't even walk properly, and she had eight pound weights. Oh, <laughs> so come on! Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, eight, eight pound weights is not doing anything. Like it's literally yeah. not doing anything for you. What are you I doing? Went, I before the quarantine, like, yeah. W- one reason, perhaps. Well, I feel bad saying this now, but w- one reason perhaps not to go vegan at this point is because if you want to like enhance your health and pack on weight, you're probably a, you're probably a hard gainer like I am, and you're gonna have to eat like a motherfucker. Damn. Yeah, I'm trying to when you work my, out. Uh, yeah. Trying to increase my sexual prospects right now, so I guess I, that's one of the reasons why I can't <laughs> go vegan. But uh, uh, right before the quarantine started, I started going to the gym. Literally three days later, quarantine process uh, the process initiated. So now I can't uh, go to like, Ali recommended that I order something online. What was it called? It was like 500 bucks. It was um, a dumbbell. That, that? Yeah. It, was, it was like a dumbbell that you could change the weight on it. No, don't do that. It's, uh, those, those aren't just good. Get, Ali recommended. Just like, no, because you need to do drop sets. You need to like pick up a lift. Go like I love way. how this just turned into like the buff boy hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. I want I want to point something out, and I think this is very sad. Wait, how tall you are? How Not tall even are you in the ritual. Wait, Chris, how tall I'm only. Four. I was gonna. I was. I was actually gonna get to that. Actually, I think it's very sad. Not even in a virtual world am I the tallest person here. I'm only five feet three, and that's it. Wow, oh, nice. I, that's amazing! I, I, like, I'm not actually short among you guys. That's great. Like I'm, I think I'm short, but among you guys, I can be king. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> not even in the virtual world can I be the tallest person. Right, that's oh, great. Okay, good. Children, little people, keep talking. Okay. You only I have not... one inch on me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> how tall is uh? Hmm. How tall is genetically modified skeptic? Because he's pretty short too. Drew's about Drew's about my height. Hmm. Wow, yeah. I feel short Drew's most of the time, but not today. Yeah. In, in the kingdom of the blind, the man <laughs> with one eye is king. <laughs> I tell I tell I told people this is why I moved to the Philippines because my main motivation. I'm kidding, but <laughs> <laughs> you're already married, Norman. Yeah, yeah. I should move to a pygmy village just so I can feel tall. You move to China. <laughs> Everyone over there is tiny. Or North Korea. Everyone there is malnourished and two feet tall. Yeah, that's... that's yeah, but I, 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 like, I like living, so I don't think I'd go there. Mm-hmm. Okay, by, by the way, don't... Uh, um, Vincent, if you want to try to gain weight, don't just, like, eat... Um, eat more protein. Like, not everything is good for gaining weight, Okay. Like there's good weight and bad weight. Eat eat as much as eat as much as meat as you possibly can. Yeah, I've been drinking uh, protein shakes recently from this thing called Arbon. Um, 
So hopefully that helps. I don't know how effective it is. I need us to do how so much more research. It's good. How hard are you working out nowadays, dude? Like, like, like um, what are you doing at home? With the eight pound weights, um, I'm doing like at least 30 minutes a day where I'm on my back and I sort of. You're losing weight with that. You know that, right? Because if you're doing eight pound weights, you're technically doing cardio, not weight resistance. <laughs> Is so really you're actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're weight, if you're working out with eight pound weights, you're not doing weight training. You're doing cardio, so you're losing weight. It is half an hour of cardio, and you lost more weight. Congratulations! Well, should I get like twenty pounds? Do whatever it whatever it takes for you to not be able to do to get to full failure before you hit fifteen. Mm. Right? 15? If, no, it's about instead of 8, eight Armin, for building eight, up mass. Between 8 and 15. Yeah. It doesn't really yeah. matter. Either, like, unless you, as long as you're above 8 and under 15, it doesn't really matter how much, you know, what it is. If you could do, if you could do 60, if you could do, I mean, you could go even higher. If you could do above 20, then you definitely need to make it higher weight. It's more endurance at that point. Yeah, it's for cardio. Technically, it's cardio if you're doing that. I think. I can't yeah. wait to. I can't wait for quarantine to be over so I can get swole at the gym. I'm gonna be swole. It's the swole on the inside that counts, man. No, oh, it's <laughs> not. It's on the outside. You don't need to get too big. Just enough to just see some definition. That's enough. Yeah. I'm gonna but get as swole as you, Armin. Huh? I'm gonna get as swole as you. I need to get more <laughs> lean. I'm trying to lose. I'm trying to lose weight right now. But you're you've been doing Mark? a lot of running. You've been doing a lot of running, Armin. Like, do you do any I'm... faster cardio? Hmm. Faster cardio is do shit, you... though. Don't believe that nonsense. I have changed my mind on many things diet-wise. I've like faster cardio. Eat some carbs before you go do your cardio. If you're doing cardio, it's good for you to do carb. Eat carbs. Yeah, because well, I was suspicious about that because I heard I, I heard it was just, it was a total fad. That some people told me to try it, and I was like, man, maybe I should just ditch this. No, eat carbs before you go to cardio. It makes your cardio, it makes you end up burning more because you are you have the glycogens in your muscle to be able to make it go faster. Yeah. Really, before you do any kind of workout, though, it's always a good idea to do at least some cardio before you do any kind of workout. No, if you're trying to gain weight, if you're trying to increase your not, size. Not, not, no, I'm not talking about full cardio. I'm like talking about some cardio to get your blood flowing. Like, yeah. a, like do a, your cardio. You know, if you're doing both cardio and weight resist training, I suggest do your cardio after. Technically, it's better to do your cardios on days that you're not doing weight training. If you are doing cardio, I think somebody like Mar uh, Vincent doesn't even need to do cardio at all. He just needs to do weight weight training. But if you are doing cardio, if you are actually trying to gain muscle, your cardio is gonna slow your weight your you know it's going to make you tired and not be able to lift as much weight right so don't Vince, exhaust gonna... yourself with your cardio uh first do your weight training i think i think Vince, look at look at it this way it's like whenever you're when you're trying to build size right now you're pretty much imagine your muscles as, as a brick wall and exercise smashes it breaks it down and you need to build it back up yeah, you build. If you, you do break. Car if, if, if you do cardio, every time that that wall smashes, what cardio does is take away a little bit more material each time. And when you build it back up, it's just it, you're you're actually losing the integrity of that wall. If you want to build mass, you gotta add, you gotta add more material so you build a thicker wall when you rebuild it each time. That and so, also so, mentally, mentally, yeah. the, the the you need progressive overload to gain weight, right? To gain yeah. muscle. And if you have exhausted yourself with anything else, it's hard to do. Like the trick is like, oh, today I was able to do like nine. Um, today I have to go ten. That's the whole. That's the only way to gain muscle. So like do every time try to do harder, 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 harder. But if you exhausted yourself with uh, anything, with less sleep, <coughs> not enough water, <coughs> emotional stress, you know having cortisol in your blood because you just did some cardio it's harder to go from the 9 to the 10 that's oh also sleep sleep a lot sleep oh, a lot I, I drink a shit ton of okay good 
and shit, re, 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 drink a shit ton of water. Sleep well, what is about a shit exercise. ton of beer? Sleep your <laughs> Susanna, you need to exercise too. Because I go you... for walks. Okay, but the problem with people that are never get fat is that they see a less need to exercise. And you know, see, Susanna never gets fat. <laughs> uh, that's that's it's why like they my never dick. Ate... <laughs> <laughs> This is a problem because you're not getting the benefits. This is why slightly chubby people I think this is why slightly chubby people live longer. Because they're always trying to get rid of that slightly extra, extra weight and they end up exercising and they end up being healthy because they're trying to get rid of that extra weight. It's not because well, that, that slight it's not because that extra weight is help is helping them in any ways. It's because in the process of trying to get rid of it, they end up doing a lot of healthy shit. But people that are always you're... naturally skinny, they don't feel like they need to do anything. <laughs> so... well, just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're not I don't have fat. anything left to lose. Like body, your, your body composition could what just be like skewed How did... un, like, un, uh, like, uh, un, uh, in an uh, in, uh, in unhealthy proportions. No, but look, she has she has everything that we are waiting. Like uh, she has the cur- natural curve and everything. Fucking hell! How do you do this? <laughs> like you don't <laughs> exercise at all? Oh, you just walk. <laughs> I just no, walk. No diet, no nothing. I eat whatever I want. Oh my god, the life is so unfair. I mean, like I'm not very toned. Like I could do a little work on my abs, but but yeah, I, I just walk up hills all day long. Well, not all day long, but when I do exercise, I just go walk up hills. Yeah. San Francisco's full of hills. Probably. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is real privilege that people don't talk about. People are like, oh, white privilege, you know, male privilege. No, this is the privilege. This is the biological privilege that some people have over the rest of us. It's not fair. No, but it's gonna deteriorate once I hit like twenty six. It's not. I gonna hope be- so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if I have some, if I have some kids, I'm gonna be fucked. Good. Yeah. <laughs> You're the worst. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I was the same way when I was Susanna's age. So I'm 33 now, and I was exactly the same way when I was Susanna's age. I could eat literally anything. I could eat two large pizzas all to myself and gain absolutely nothing. Now, if I look at pizza, I gain about five pounds. Wow. (laughs) Man, if I was like you guys, I don't know if I would be able to stop eating. Food is just too good. It's fine. Well, I will say something that keeps you real skinny is an anxiety disorder. <laughs> How do I get one of those? You <laughs> may <laughs> have to be born with it, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you guys, are lucky. You, guys are all, you guys are all still young. Hell, hell I'm 40 now, and i got to watch what I eat. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to turn into the next Pillberry's Doughboy. <laughs> <laughs> Mars, you don't look 40. I am 40, believe it or not. Fucking hell, man. I'm the youngest Where's one here, and it feels hair? great. What's up? Yeah. Why didn't you get... Hey, wait, oh. Is that going? How, uh, Vincent, how old are you? I think I ask you every time, and I forget. Yeah, you, just like you forget that you were on our podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the, only, that's the only thing about your podcast that I remember, because that's the only thing that about your podcast that really matters. <laughs> 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 we've had James Lindsay on, Peter Bogosian, Michael Shermer, man, we've Yasmin Muhammad, Ali Rizvi. We've had so many great guests on there. Uh, I'm proud none of, of them podcast. compare to our Persian king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I am 23. Okay, so it's been two hours. I'm gonna stop recording here. We could just chill if we want, or if we can go. Yeah, hold on. Awesome. Right. We can.